Hello everyone, I'm Sundaman. Before the main part, there is one thing to note. A common mistake in mathematics is treating infinity as if it were a number. However, a number called infinity does not actually exist. We must be very careful about this. What? Whoa, my whiteboard! Who on earth did this? Huh? What's starting? I want someone to explain it. Wait, am I the one who has to explain it? Um, maybe this diagram represents a function. Also, it says differentiate, but what in the world does it mean? Hmm, it looks like there's more. This graph seems to represent a function called delta of x. It seems that delta of x takes the value infinity when x equals 0, and 0 otherwise. It's treating infinity as if it were an actual number. I can't accept something like this. And it even said differentiate, but I have no idea what that means. Ah, uh, I just want to go home. Sundaman, you seem to be troubled. Menon, why are you here? For now, why don't we roughly review what differentiation means? That sounds like a good idea. Let's suppose we have the graph of y equals f of x here. And we take a point, x, y, on the graph. Symbols like f prime of x and dy by dx represent the slope of the tangent line at this point. In other words, they represent the instantaneous rate of change. Oh yeah, that's right. It's the ratio of the small change in y to the small change in x. Exactly. Does that help you remember what differentiation means? Strictly speaking, differentiation is defined using limits, but let's skip that part for now. I kind of remembered about differentiation, but how are we supposed to differentiate this? What happens to the tangent line where it says infinity? Maybe like this? No, that's probably wrong. Indeed, this problem is shrouded in mystery. For now, instead of differentiating right away, let's first figure out what this function actually is. Here we have a square with an area of 1. Yes. And while keeping the area at 1, we make it longer and thinner. It ends up looking like this. Boom, I see. It kind of looks like that function from earlier. Maybe if we stretch this infinitely, it becomes the function from earlier? Yes, though it's just one possible interpretation. Or we could use a different shape too. This is the famous shape known as the normal distribution. Again, keeping the area at 1 and stretching it out. This also starts to resemble the shape of that function. But why do we have to keep the area at 1? That's an important point. If we keep stretching it infinitely, that function will appear. And it is considered that the area of this part remains 1. The area is 1? But a line shouldn't have any area. Well, normally that's true. It might feel confusing, but let's move on for now. We want to express that this area is 1 using an equation. When it comes to expressing an area, that would be definite integrals. Let's quickly review definite integrals. Suppose the function y equals f of x always takes positive values. And let's think about the area s of this part. S represents the area between the graph of y equals f of x and the x-axis. Here the range in the x-direction is from a to b. Then, s can be expressed using a definite integral like this. You remembered it correctly. Using this, we can express the problem function with equations. Now, the Dirac delta function is, intuitively, a function that looks like this. It takes the value infinity at x equals 0 and zero everywhere else. Then, if you integrate it from negative infinity to infinity, in other words, over the entire real line, the result is 1. Roughly speaking, it means that the area of this part is 1. As a side note, the name Dirac delta function comes from the physicist Paul Dirac. Even though it's called the delta function, it's actually a distribution, a type of generalized function, and not an ordinary function. Please keep that in mind. Wow, I didn't know that! By the way, was there any condition saying the area should be 1? Well, let's set that aside. Actually, this function has a mysterious property. It's already mysterious enough. Sundamon, try calculating this expression. Hmm, this is... Taking the product of the delta function and a function f of x, and integrating it over the entire real line. That's exactly right. Let's assume for now that f of x is continuous, but you don't have to worry too much about that. Got it. At first glance, this expression looks difficult, but the fact that there's the delta function here means... Um, what could it mean? Then let me give you a hint. 
Actually, you can replace f of x with f of 0 and proceed with the calculation. What? Really? Oh, but now that you mention it, since delta of x becomes 0 when x is not 0, basically, we only need to consider when x equals 0. That the delta function is special, so let's avoid touching it carelessly. Then, since f of 0 is a constant, we can move it outside the integral. And this part becomes 1, based on the definition of the delta function. So the answer is f of 0. Well done, Zandaman. To sum up, if you multiply the delta function by f of x and integrate, you get f of 0. It's a beautiful result. If we denote the left-hand side as bracket delta f, it looks much simpler. This is almost like delta extracting the value of f at the origin. That's a wonderful way to think about it. Until now, the definition of the delta function and the calculations using it have been intuitive, but somewhat questionable in terms of mathematical rigor. If we just think of delta as extracting the value of f at the origin, there is nothing questionable about it. Though we lose the intuitive way of thinking we had. Having two perspectives is interesting. Well, for this time, let's not focus too much on rigor, and allow ourselves to go back and forth between these two perspectives. Understood. Now we have a rough idea of what the delta function is. Finding its derivative seems difficult, but at least we can easily calculate its integral. Wow, really? Well then, let's try integrating the delta function. We'll set the integration interval from negative infinity to x. Since x is already in use, let's use t as the variable. How would this look when represented in a graph? Okay. For now, let's draw the graph of the delta function. The delta function has this kind of shape, right? Here, let's represent the integration interval from negative infinity to x like this. And when x is less than zero, since the delta function is zero, even if you integrate, the result will still be zero, right? Wow, that sounds great. And we consider that the area here is one. That means as soon as x passes zero, the result of the integral becomes one. After that, the delta function remains zero. So the result doesn't change. Thank you, Zandaman. If we represent this on a graph again, it would look like this. Actually, the function represented by the right graph is known as the heavy sign stuck function. That's kind of an interesting result. By the way, what happens if you integrate exactly up to zero? That's something to wonder about. Actually, the interpretation varies depending on the application. As a common interpretation, sometimes the middle value is taken or it is shifted toward one side. Yeah, that seems reasonable. So we understood the integration of the delta function, but what about differentiation? Well, uh, ah, uh, watch out, a hint is coming. What? Wow, this is. I see, this is a great hint. Um, what does it mean? It seems that this delta prime represents the derivative of delta. And here, instead of thinking about the derivative of delta itself, we examine how it affects f. By doing so indirectly, we can figure out what delta prime is. Really? I'm having a hard time keeping up. Let's organize the situation. Yes. First, delta is something that extracts the value of f at the origin. Oh right, that's what it was. Now, if we replace delta with delta prime, what happens to the result? Let's find that out. Oh yeah. First bracket delta prime f means multiplying delta prime of x by f of x and integrating over the entire real line that's correct though we don't exactly know what delta prime of x is here let's move on without worrying about it got it so what do we do from here look carefully here one of the two functions is being differentiated in cases like this integration by parts might be useful oh yeah i might have heard about that before it's really vague but I think, first, multiply the two functions as they are. Then take the product where the other function is differentiated, integrate it and subtract. That sounds right. By the way, since we differentiated f, let's assume that f is differentiable. Okay, what happens to delta of x here? Delta of x. Since delta of x is always zero when x is not zero, it is also zero when x is plus or minus infinity. So the first term vanishes. Sounds good. Now about the other term. I remember now. Delta of x has the role of extracting the value at x equals zero by integration. 
So we just need to plug 0 into f prime of x. And with that, we have our answer. To sum up, just like delta extracts the value of f at the origin, delta prime can be thought of as extracting the derivative at the origin, though it comes with a minus sign. While delta extracts the value, delta prime extracts the rate of change of the value. It's kind of a strange result. I don't really understand what it means to differentiate delta. But if it can be differentiated, then delta prime would have this kind of role. Hmm. But. What's wrong? We understand the role of delta prime. But what we really want to know is, what happens when we differentiate delta itself? Isn't there a way to find out the actual form of delta prime? That's definitely something to wonder about. But since delta isn't a function in the usual sense, the question of what its derivative looks like may not even be meaningful. The mystery only deepens. Sundemon, look at that! What in the world is that? Oh my! It looks similar to the previous hint, but this time, delta prime has been replaced by x delta prime. This is getting even more mysterious! Who even thought of something like this? It looks like there's more coming. If we calculate this expression, the result seems to be negative f of zero. The answer was already prepared for us. I'm glad it saved us the trouble. And this expression can be represented like this. Oh, uh, well, I guess so. Do you notice anything here? Um, well, the two expressions look kind of similar. Exactly. By comparing the two expressions, we can obtain an equation like this. However, it is not a regular equation. It means they have the same effect on f when applied through the bracket. That's the sense in which they are equal. In other words, they are equal as distributions. Hmm, I see. Delta prime and delta are connected by a rather simple equation. I feel like we've gotten a much clearer understanding. Still, I almost understand what this equation really means, but not quite. Well, it's not a regular equation in the first place. This is an attempt to express delta prime in a formula, and we got as close as possible. Moreover, there is another approach to understanding what delta prime is. What are you talking about? First, let's approximate the delta function using the normal distribution. We'll denote this function as delta sub sigma of x. By adjusting the parameter sigma, while keeping the area at 1, delta sub sigma of x approaches the delta function. Let's pause here, and find its derivative. It turns out looking like this. It stretches sharply upward and downward. Why does it turn out like that? Take a closer look at the original function. The left half is increasing, so the slope is positive. The right half is decreasing, so the slope is negative. Oh, I see. Moreover, the original function changes rapidly near the origin. To achieve this rapid change, the slope must be extremely sharp. Now, if we stretch the original function infinitely, we can think of it as becoming the delta function. In that case, its derivative would also stretch infinitely, and become the derivative of the delta function. Or at least, that's one way to interpret it. However, the behavior near the origin is more complicated, making it harder to regard it as a function. I thought the delta function was already an amazing concept, but its derivative is even harder to grasp. Today we explored the delta function and its derivative. How was it? I feel the concept of differentiation expanding in my mind. Well then, take care everyone. See you later.